Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. So you might have understood that I'm during the summer gonna do a bit more of an occult focus on different occult personalities and do biographies on them much more what they believe than their lives. And I thought well to sort of get a taste both what I know and sort of what is out there let's do an iceberg on this one the only issue is with the icebergs there are two that I found uh, this one you have been seeing and this other one now the issue with these ones I should say myself they are really really tame this is like a 16 year old maybe 15 year old who first got their taste in occultism and sort of made an iceberg based upon this like initial tasting not knowing that there is a little bit more spicy stuff out there, but as an introductory iceberg, I guess it could be interesting. So we're going to look at the first one I showed you. The second one is actually conspiracy theories around occultism. But the first one is actually people's beliefs. And I think this one we can actually learn something from and see what we can focus on in the future. And also give you an explanation of what the hell some of these things are and a bigger understanding of it. So there are seven levels, as you can see from <laughs> normal, I guess, above the iceberg, normie man, to someone interesting to you become a fish. <laughs> the thing is with this one, a uh, person I would say, why are some of them that low? Why is Wicca all the way on top? And then like, I don't know, like Hindu nationalism. Like what? Learning Greek? What? Poor Greek people. They 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 are the <laughs> they are the fish people. All Greeks are fish people. Who who could have thunk? <laughs> Joke. But let's actually go layer by layer. Let's see what it is here. Level one. I do want to point out something before I really start here. Occultism is usually defined as Western mysticism. So eh, there will be a lot of non-Western mysticism here, which shouldn't be defined as occultism. But you know give them some slack it's a definition that is so broad and really doesn't have a good definition to it because it, what the hell is it but usually it's western occultism but now all right let's start here one by one reading the king james bible all right so this one's actually a bit interesting again it's gonna be interesting quite quickly here it's not occultism yes but the king james version of the bible is such a odd book it was one of the first translations to english in uh, of the Bible, if I'm correct, in 1611. But the thing is with the King James Bible, it's a lot of, he took in a lot of liberty. Sort of like the, the Catholic statement of saying, do not translate to your local languages because it will ruin the text and what's in it. The King James Bible is such a good example of the Catholics who are correct in this one because there's a lot of uh, errors in it. Now, don't think wrong, me saying this will make people fucking furious. They want to hang me for that type of statement because many people view the King James Bible as one of the better Bibles. But trust me, uh, it's it's garbage. It's a garbage translation of it. <laughs> it's rude. It's rude of me saying that, but it's not great. It's a lot of newer sort of Protestant movements or uh, people who were allowed to read the Bible themselves, they've created their own religions based upon this Bible. Uh, hell, I mean, most Protestant occults, oh, uh, sorry, most most ca most Protestant concepts comes from this damn Bible. This damn Bible has created so much tearing within Protestantism. Now, I used to defend this Bible a tiny bit here now. Yes, I'm rude to it because I don't like it, but there's a lot of other translations that are even worse. So while it's, I personally don't think it's the best translation, it's still not the worst translation. Trust me, it could have been a lot worse. The international translation of the Bible also has some errors in it. So there's going to be errors. Uh, so it's going to be sort of a debate thing. This 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 text or this text, uh, that phrase or that phrasing. So it did its job in some sense for its time. But I personally think we should go beyond this by this point. But uh, again, it's it's really liked. Protestantism. I won't dwell on this too much because it's nothing really to do with the occult. I just want to say it's a it's a reformist movement in 1500s that escalated to its own religion within Christianity. The split off it was multiple people within this. Luther is usually the one they 
the finest, the most important one because he sort of in ways started it. But trust me, there are so many reformers. And this reform within the Catholic Church has been in debate for over 300 years before the Reformation happened. It's just that uh, it was at the end there. And Protestantism came from that the Reformation. But yet, yeah, the, the issues within the Catholic Church has been numerous for over 300 years. And debates have been happening for over 300 years. The thing is, the Church doesn't like to change. So the radical people have to come along and, you know, it's very bloody. It's very bloody, this sort of reforms. Uh, but the funny thing is, you can actually look back at other sort of reformist groups before the Reformation and see how they were uh, casted out quite quickly. But it's always been the issue with Christianity, sectarianism, always like split, 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 split. Oh, you think Jesus knows like that way? I'm going to split, 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 split. <laughs> split, split. Oh, divine being, not divine being. Double divine being, split, 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 split. <laughs> it's always been this way. Pantheism. Now, this is a concept that is more and more getting normal in our society, and it's a very ancient thing. But it's sort of that reality is God. We're sort of like the God representing of reality. So the, the why I'm saying it's quite common now is when people lose God, but they usually say, well, God is, you know, I still believe in God in some sense. It's like, oh, what is that God? Well, I think God is maybe everything, nature around us. It's like, yeah, that's pantheism, that nature around you, everything is the divine, sort of that everything that exists is God. Reality is identical with the divine. Wicca. Okay, I don't know what this is doing up here. It feels like it should be way below. But Wicca is a neo-pagan concept. It came from England in the 50s. So the reason why I also say it shouldn't be this up top, there is also something called neo-Wiccan. Uh, because Wiccan still has a sort of tradition to their worship, you know, pagan worship. They have rituals and things they have to do. But Neo-Wiccan, for example, they don't follow a set of core beliefs that Wiccans have or rituals that Wiccans have. And they choose their own pantheon, which is very fascinating. They can choose their own divinity, they can choose their own god. So there's a lot to this. But in a way, if you just take Wiccan... I don't know, it shouldn't be up here, should, there's so much more to it. But yeah, there's a lot to Wiccanism. I, I don't really know where to start in this one. I can tell you that uh, a Neo-Wiccan once did a ritual for me, which was really nice. She broke some eggs and crushed it and said a prayer to it. And sort of giving me luck, I think. I have no clue what the heck she was doing. But I did enjoy she was doing sort of a ritual towards me and sort of a thing to me. Now some Christians would say, that's devil worship. They use a lot of pentagrams and they use a lot of things that would be defined as uh, satanistic, but they sh they are they have nothing in common with each other. Apathetic antitheism. <sighs> I don't really know what to say about this one. Apathetic means showing or feeling no interest, enthusiasm or concern, and then antitheism means you are against religion or against theism, sort of taking a stance against God, while obviously not believing in God yourself, but it's sort of like the institutions of God. Uh, so. I guess you take a stance, but you don't give a damn. What? <laughs> this one is just weird. More or less, I guess, an anti-theist that doesn't give a damn. <laughs> Liking Greek mythology. <laughs> Again, why the hell is this one here? Yeah, you like Greek mythology. You, you, you've seen Hercules, you know, Disney movie Hercules. Now you're, you're a fan of Greek mythology and you read it. Eh, okay, what the fuck? What am I supposed to say about this? <laughs> yeah, good for you. Good for you. You like to read stories. Tier 2. Now it's a little bit, again, normy, but into the occult in a bit, I guess. I wouldn't define any of this as the occult, except maybe Satanism. Eh. All right, let's go. Reading the Norse Eddas. So the Eddas are the Icelandic sagas. It's sort of the only thing we know about Norse mythology. It's a collection of texts and poems about like what they believed in. It's an interesting read, but there is uh, much debate on how true this is. So how true it is to old Norse mythology, but we don't know much. We only know what was written way after the beliefs were, were already in place. So, yeah, again, the issue with these people, they didn't write much, so, yeah. Catholics. So something that's quite obvious that with this uh, iceberg, these are from a Protestant sort of family, because otherwise Catholics wouldn't be there, and would be in the top one. We have a Catholics are, yeah, pff, Catholics, I'm not gonna go into this, there's no point. 
a lot of Protestants, for some reason, don't believe Catholics are Christian. And the reason is they don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> I know, it's silly. But the, the Catholics have their own tradition. You know, they don't, they're not Bible thumpers. They don't go into detail of the Bible. They have a tradition around the, the Bible more than the Bible itself. So a lot of Protestants, more, you know, again, Bible thumping Protestants, are like, oh, you disagree with this one line, therefore you're not Christian. Eh, who gives a shit? Fuck you. Biblical history. So I'm guessing this is just people who believe in the Bible's histories so are 100% correct. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to that. And if you if you do believe, I think around 6,000 years old, uh, our Earth and the entirety of the descriptions in the Bible is true. It's a spicy one. Humans lived for quite a long time, and a lot of people died. A lot of incest. A lot of incest. Mm. <laughs> it's, but yeah, so you believe in the, the biblical history. I'm not going to go into this. I read the Bible. <laughs> it's just so much of this. It's just... I, yeah. I, I, ironic Levay and Satanism. So yeah, they follow <laughs> Levay's form of Satanism. Yes. A gaff, a joke, fun. Haha. I'm edgy. Yeah, I mean, LeVay kind of formed his his thing way too edgy. It's just, it's just atheists who doesn't like the church, so they go like, oh, well, here's a Luciferian concept of rebellion and focusing on your ego, sort of the left-hand path of occultism. The left-hand path is more focusing on the self, the ego, one's own hedonistic wants. The right is focusing on ritual, on the status quo, being, following orders, sort of, see, like... God's right hand path and his sort of laws of the universe, you follow it fully. That's what you believe. The left is sort of like Lucifer's own ego. You follow your own will, your own want. And LeVay is sort of like, LeVay's entire focus in do what you will, do what you want, do whatever you want. As long as it doesn't hurt other people, I guess, but do what you will. Roman mythology. Now, I usually say there are two sort of forms of Roman mythology. Usually, you have a deity based upon, you know, something in the world, like yeah, God of War, rest of that. But usually it's a deity for every city. So a city has a deity that protects the city, which you pray to and sacrifice to. But in the later Roman era, you had Sol Invictus. You had to focus on one god. But this is not one god. It's like he's the only god, but it's like a, a representation of all the gods in one being. The other gods can still exist, but he's a representation of all the gods. This later went into... Uh, Christianity. This is why they could actually accept Christianity later on, because Sol Invictus was the dead Jew on the stick. <laughs> uh, so it just made sense for them. Uh, but yeah, Roman mythology is cool stuff. You know, a cult of Mars, everybody. Follow Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> Western Buddhism. All right, this is a very watered-down Buddhism for the Western folk. So there are different traditions that Western Buddhism came in. Uh, some of this should be further down, to be honest, but I guess maybe there is some. But uh, see it as like Buddhists came into the West, sort of revoked a new tradition, usually New Age is focused on this one. And a lot of white women and beta white males, sorry, was like, oh, this is interesting, let's go home a bit. And the theology is actually very watered down, so it's... <laughs> it's, it's yeah... Just want to quickly point out there is more to this there's a long history of buddhist and christians and western folks interacting with each other but i think people who usually define themselves as western buddhist or wouldn't that mindset isn't the buddhist themselves it's again it's sort of the watered down white woman buddhism again i'm not shitting on real buddhists it's nothing to do with them it's just a watered down version of it that's how i view it at least yeah here's tier three it's a it's a mix of things. I don't really understand how, why some of these are here. But again, whoever made this is a, <laughs> it's probably quite young. Hellenism. There are Hellenists alive today, especially in Greece. They still try to upkeep their tradition. Now, the only issue that these people have, a lot of their former holy sites for Hellenism is... Uh, you're not allowed to go there. They are like historical sites or museums. So they had to usually do it in the parking lot outside of uh, these places. Because there are areas that are specific for certain rituals 
in the year and you have to sacrifice your 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 fruits and veggies there so it's a lot of hard things for them and i'm not and if i'm correct it's until very recently sort of greece accepted these hellenistic rituals to become more and more okay because it's always going to be conflict but yeah hellenism still alive today still kicking still trying to do things but not allowed into these sites so it's conflicts but hellenism also is alive on the internet you can find hellenistic groups you can talk to them there but it's usually about you know sort of in the pagan concept again it's your your folk your tradition your areas but they're still active on the internet as well you can talk to them there cool guys studying the church fathers all right so again this is written by protestant this is usually not uncommon to do especially in catholicism here is where tradition usually came to be so i i guess the edgy thing here can be depending on what church father you're talking about like that might be the edgy thing but yeah but augustine of hippo for example is one i personally like a lot so it's sort of like the guys who set the framework of Christian tradition for the early church, which later became you know, influential throughout Christianity. But, you know, if you're a Protestant, you're like, but they are influenced by Satan, <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> uh, actually, well enough, I had a guy uh, criticize me on this one because I did say, uh, somewhat that depending on the church father, depending on, I wouldn't say the fathers, it's kind of like a weird thing, depending on the theologian back in the day that could have been influential, some of the theologians can be defined as Gnosticistic, sort of like they're not part of the Christian idea themselves, but sort of have their own view that has been influenced in one way or another, but are not the mainstream. So when, but when I mentioned this, the guy got actually really angry saying, no, the church fathers are not that, which is like, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, but I'm just saying there can be uh, different views on this, as it's marked right here. It's literally marked in this one. So this man views, or the man who made this, views as these can be agnostic in some sense, like uh, knowledge outside of the, of the, uh, the followed path, which, yeah, it can be, but usually isn't, but... Again, depending, depending, depending definition. Odinism. So this one is used wrongly a lot, quite a lot wrongly. So there are Norse pagans still alive today. I've met some who are culturally Norse pagan because their area in Sweden were never you know, changed over to Christianity. That exists. Those areas exist. Not that uncommon. Uh, well, okay. It, it is somewhat uncommon, but it's depending on what area you're from. It might not be uncommon. But usually the issue with Odinism is it's used more as a definition by supremacists, I, I should say, sort of a religious folk, fascist folk, to define some sort of a Scandinavian faith that isn't there. So it's, it's oddly used. Odinism per se, the word, is new. It's not that old as 1800s. Yeah, so the usage of the word itself and the usage of like Odinism, if you fully believe in it, you can have an it's it's it can be very special in how you follow that. But Norse mythology doesn't have to be any edginess, even though the issue with I should I should also point out the issue with Odinism is they ruin a lot of Norse mythologies. A lot of websites you watch for white supremacy, for example, that define a lot of Norse text runes as like white supremacists which like fuck you first of all fuck you but it's because of people who follow more ordinism because they are very far right in their views and they use norse symbols because i honestly don't know why it's their own definition of things because again enough until they have nothing to do with it but the uh, your own definition of things so usually is this type of idea you have if you're in ordinism it's not the actual theology of it is sort of like a cultural stamp, a religious stamp of I'm Scandinavian nationalist, I guess. Western Hinduism. This one is spicy. This one is a spicy boy. So I don't think... All right, so let's just take the basic bitch, Western Hinduism for this one. But Hinduism has an influence in occultism, like... G, Louis, Papa G. It's all there. It's pretty much... Modern day occultism is pretty much Hinduism mixed with Western occultist tradition from before, and it's ooh, ooh, 
Ooh, it's some spicy shit. It's oof, oof. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I don't really know how I'm gonna talk about this one in particular right now. It's very influential. There's been many different groups. Uh, some very bad, some very tame, some really, really bad, but it's been very influential. So in comparison to this to Western Buddhism, which is, is just a watered-down Buddhism, I would say, Western Hinduism, well, there is a watered-down version of it. The influence has been... has been... <laughs> and hell, I mean, if you want to be fully honest, uh, as I usually say, uh, the Veda scriptures, the old Hindu concepts, uh, I see a lot of influence in that in Plato's The Republic. So if you want to go even further, that in, in, in some sense, uh, the entirety of the West is just another version of Hinduism mixed in with our traditions. So wink, wink, nudge, nudge, take that, take that opium and let's move on because <laughs> there's a lot here. Luciferianism. All right, so much like Louvet, but not really. So Luciferianism is more about the Satanistic tradition that uh, Lucifer sort of had. So the picture here is, for example, from John Milton's Paradise Lost. That book has been extremely influential in Satanism because it viewed Lucifer in a positive light. So the light bringer, uh, the fall from heaven, uh, the tree of knowledge was about giving people the view of, of going against God, not going against God, but the view of what God wanted. That's why he didn't want you to eat the apple. So it's an idea that Lucifer is a positive figure. And again, it's the left-hand path thing. Uh, follow your own will. You know, do your own ego. Don't follow the structure. Uh, so yeah, and uh, this has a lot been used in anarchistic movements, sort of like going against the church, going against the structures in place. So Lucifer is our rebellious person. Uh, we use Lucifer as a, as a symbol for why we need to revolt against the structures in place for a better system of tomorrow. Because many people believe Lucifer's system would have been better because, you know, he just went against God and we know how God's uh, system has been like. A lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of bad things. But Lucifer could have given us that uh, um, better system, better world, not as much death and suffering. So, yeah, positive light of Lucifer. Eastern Orthodoxy. Why is this one here? It's like, God damn, it should be up. It's just, it's a schism that happened back in the day in the church, split up into two, the Catholic Church you have, and then the Eastern Orthodox Church. Eastern Orthodox Church is not like a united church, it's different churches, usually based upon uh, you know, the nation you're from. Oh, you know. A lot of traditions there, a lot of different. Uh, one big thing that is very different here, there's no personal connection with God, really. So let's take uh, Sunday sermons. Uh, church, uh, the, the, uh, the priest goes into a hidden room. There's a wall in between. The wall is usually rather thin. And there he does his prayers. People can hear him do the prayers. And they pray towards this room. The point being that God is in this room. Or God is sort of like the divine is not maybe not present in the room. But it's sort of a connection with the divine in this room. And not every person should have this connection with the divine. But you pray towards the divine. And they also have a lot of uh, uh, pictures on the walls. And this is also because of a tradition of anti... Oh, sorry. Eclanicism. I think it was a Catholic. Kind of whatever, but the idea that there should be no pictures at all in the churches. So that was a big thing back in the days. So the, the and the Orthodox Church kind of went against the idea of not having pictures. So they just put on a lot of pictures instead. So it's like they have their own tradition, but they're not they're not any odd people. They're just different sort of Christian. Their theodicy. So this one I don't get what this one is here. But so it's a question or an answer, I should say, on the problem of evil. So uh, a big problem that a lot of Christians have to answer is how can evil exist if there exists an all good and omnipotent God? How can an all good God allow evil to exist or evil to do their thing? How can, you know, a good God sit by while babies die of cancer or die at all or rape patterns or whatever, you, you name it? Uh, and the thing is, honestly, and, and the theodicy is just the answers to this. There are many answers. One big one is, oh, there's free will, or uh, God has a plan, or heaven will come, this is a test. 
uh, how do you know what good and evil is? How blah blah blah. So there's a lot of answers to this one, but I don't understand why this one is here. This is not a movement or anything. I would say this is just a an answer to a problem. But yeah, the theodicy is a problem with it. Any sort of uh, any religion has a deity that is all good or yeah. Never. Another answer is you know oh he's like humans so he's imperfect. But then it's like how can he be imperfect? And oh, the issue with the definition of God is that he is a bit uh, paradoxical in his own view. An interesting answer, I would say, is that you do not understand God's being. It's an impossible thing to understand. Uh, for example, in the ontology, ontological answer on, or ontological solution of God's existence, sort of like, how can we prove God's existence? I usually like the idea that a God, a concept of God, as in God as the sort of a beyond our understanding could not be done by some simple-minded fool like ourselves so it has to be influenced by something that's actually like it which I disagree with but I actually actually formulate the ontology ontological answer differently and I say well um, if you would write God what God is completely fully on a piece of paper that piece of paper would have been in the spiritual realm itself, because you cannot write what God actually is without being in the spiritual realm. So it's like, eh, there's a lot of things to it. Confucianism. Confucius said, no, <laughs> let's not go into that. I don't understand why this one is here. I don't know. He's pretty much telling me that all East Asian people are weird, which, <laughs> no. Maybe this is like Confucianism in the West. I call it the West. That is odd, but honestly, I know nothing of it. Uh, for me, I don't know what's here. It's barely religion. It's more, more philosophy. But it's very influential in the East. But we're not living in the East, and occultism has nothing to do with the East. So, chaos magic. So this one is newer. Chaos magic is a bit newer. Magic, or magic, whatever, has existed for a long time, especially when occultism. But chaos magic is more based upon yourself, your uh, own being. So it's a representation. It's a, you do magic as a representation or for a representation of your well-being. And usually, yes, you can see here, love magic, sex magic, wealth magic, it's for yourself. And sort of, it's a magic, yeah, it's a magic representation of yourself and for your own well-being, your own relationships, your own life. So not so much to do with chaos. I would say, like when I th when I first read chaos magic, I was thinking about like Warhammer chaos. I should say, come is also sort of related to the word chaos, which is used within chaos magic. It's a uh, your subconscious in a way. So it's like you you pray magic for your consciousness, your individual subconscious conscious to become better. Give it a path to become better. Panentheism is the idea that we are within God itself. So. Well, pantheism, and we talked about before, is that everything is God. But now it's like God isn't deity of itself, an entity of itself, but we are within God. We're within the, the deity that is God. But see it as a lot of like the simulation. Like God, God is beyond the universe. God is bigger than the universe, but God is also the universe. So it might be the computer. The computer is actually a good example. Like you play Minecraft in the computer. The Minecraft is the universe, but the computer uh, is also God. So God is both Minecraft, the Minecraft you're playing, and its own entity. And the question is, how many how many universes exist within God? I saw that I missed one. Orthodox Lutheranism. So yeah, Orthodox Lutheranism is just Lutheranism when there wasn't really a set belief, set core within Lutheranism. So it had its own tradition, own little path it went. It died out, uh, like last for about 200 years, but sort of like a Lutheranism away from today's Lutheranism with its own traditions and own ideas. So uh, I don't know if anybody still believes it. I found one Facebook page which gave me this amugus meme, but it's more of a satire on Lutheranism, sort of complaining about uh, modern day Lutherans being a bit too nice, I guess. So in a way, it's, I guess it's, you can define it today as sort of a infighting between Lutheran church or being more traditional versus being more liberal. 
tier four. This one is odd. In here, we're actually starting to get the occultism, but we also get two weird ones, learning Greek. How would I... I will skip that. All right, I will skip learning Greek. I don't... It's just that silly thing. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> but yeah, tier four, more into modern day normal sort of occultism, not anything weird yet. Taoism, why the hell is this here? This makes no sense, why is it here? <laughs> it's another East Asian uh, religion, sort of living with harmony, one with harmony. Usually it's kind of funny that whenever there's a, a lot of environmental damage or environmental catastrophes happening in uh, China, for example, it's usually in the saying that, hey, the government is bad. It's the nature saying it because we have to live in harmony. The, job of the emperor is to make China be in harmony. So came from that. I don't know why it's here. Hermeticism. Okay, there's a ton to Hermeticism, but this is pretty much one of the schools within occultism. So if you are within the school of occultism, like let's say Masons or something like that, this is where you're at. This is pretty much your thing. But Hermeticism is a sort of a group of ideas. Again, there's quite a lot but one core belief, for example, is that God is created. Usually it's created itself, but it's usually created by something else. So everything in the universe, including God, has its creation. Uh, one hermetic tradition that I've uh, dabbled quite, not I wouldn't say quite a lot in, but I dabbled somewhat in, is the idea that God was created by two forms, that uh, sort of the feminine and the masculine, and this then created a God that then created the universe. So... God creation concept. So, but any, any sort of idea within occultism pretty much is within hermeticism, even though they don't, for some reason, like to admit it. For example, uh, I was in, with Masons, uh, and we talked about some hermeticism, because I saw it in their um, sort of shields, a lot of hermetic things. And they said, oh, no, 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 we don't believe in hermeticism. It's like, your entire thing is hermeticism. Where the hell are you lying to me? <laughs> Also very important to note that it's usually God creating God. So the masculine and feminine is a God or God, which created a form of God, which is within this universe. So it's all God, but God made God. God created a new form. So not a form that is within Hermeticism, but a form of itself is alchemy. So alchemy, again, usually takes different forms, but let's take alchemy within Hermeticism. Hermeticism still is from the Hellenistic era. Hermes, uh, messenger, comes from that. Uh, so a lot of uh, planets as a representation of a force. So one thing within alchemy, for example, is you can do, uh, you can play around with, uh, you always do like, it's, it's always like powder. You play with powder or spices or something like that. You can crush that, burn it, and see what sort of, sign it gives let's say after you burn certain types of powders and it becomes red it's a representation of mars which is a representation of another sort of emotion for you or sort of uh, how things are so that can then give you an explanation on how your day will be like alchemy there is again a shit ton of tradition behind it and it's not just western occultism or occultism that has it it's everywhere sort of a part of every tradition, but sort of it's much more focused on yeah, a representation. It's all a representation of either planets or something else. But it's usually that a, a color, for example, is a representation of something. So we view all of this as a representation. And this is uh, also a Neoplatonic concept. So it's an, uh, it's an understanding of something beyond. So you can do something here in the material to get an explanation of the beyond, the idea or ideal. So, yeah. Gnosticism. All right, again, a lot to this as well, but view Gnosticism as knowledge. It's getting more knowledge, sort of experience something outside of the set path, or set knowledge that exists already. So you gain more knowledge of a certain thing. So uh, one, for example, Christian Gnosticism, is the other Gospels, because there are like 20 other Gospels or something like that, from the five in the Bible, so I think it's even more than that. Uh, the one Gospel being, sent, for example, the Gospel of Thomas, that's counted as a Gnostic Bible, meaning it's knowledge outside of the Bible. Now, 
they don't view this as truth because they only view the Bible as the truth, but it's sort of like if you want a bigger understanding or more understanding of a certain subject, certain idea, uh, learn by yourself. Take experience, take your perspective, know, learn, read about other things outside to get an, un an understanding, a gnosis, a knowledge that doesn't, that is not the norm, that's not, that's a bit outside for yourself to get a better understanding. More or less, again, different tradition has different things, but that's sort of like a ground for it. Thelema. Uh, before I start, I just want to say, I want to correct myself. I did say within Satanism, do what they will, but yes, that's actually within Thelema, but you know, the ways, <laughs> they have similarities. But yeah, the law of Thelema is do what they will, shall become the whole of the law. So again, do what you want. It's all of that entire deal. So what is Thelema? Thelema is a an, 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 an new occultist tradition started by Alistair Crowley. Crowley is, you know, more or less the modern day occultism. Like, he did a lot. He made it very mainstream. And Thelema is one of them. And Thelema is... Uh, uh, I know some people would in Thelema. It's a lot of rituals, a lot of things. I, it's odd. I don't know what else really to say about it. There is a focus in many ways on Egyptian things. But pardon me, if I may be rude. Crowley does whatever he will. He does whatever he will. <laughs> and that will be the law. And Thelema is pretty much Crowley doing what he wants and people following. So if he's interested in Gnosticism, he does it. If he's interested in uh, Horus and Egyptians, he will do that. Or as he will do that. It feels way too much of it, but it's a, it's a combination, in many ways, of a former cultist tradition based with Crowley's own concepts and rituals, and they have their own rituals. Crowley experimented a lot with rituals throughout his life. He went to different sort of occultists, like all the temple or Otto, <laughs> uh, hermetic schools, you name it, he was there. He tried different rituals, he tried summoning demons within humans. And uh, a lot of this later went on to Thelema, where he con constantly has tried to uh, rebuild it, basing it more on Egyptology, because Egyptology was a, was a thing that was really, really popular during the time. So it's, it's a mix mash of quite a lot of occultist pagan, Egyptology, you name it, it's there within uh, his idea. So it's love, but it view it as ritual based. It's uh, because most occultism view themselves on the rituals. So you have to look at the rituals themselves. Now I don't have any rituals in front of me, but there's a lot of a lot of crazy, crazy, wacky rituals. Uh, but yeah, Thelema is is what it is. But in the end of the day, Thelema is also in in many ways everything we talked about previously in one form. It's there. It's his his idea. So Wiccan is there, all of that. P pagan, Norse, blah, 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 all there, all there within Thelema. Unironic Luciferianism. I'm not going to say much about this now. It more or less, if people can follow uh, Thelema, then people can follow the base theology as well. Again, he has a theology build up, he has an actual religion build up. Some people actually believe it and are not just doing it because egoism and left, went, left hand path, but actually doing it because they believe in it. The, the theology is true, or the form of uh, what is represented in many ways are true, so they just follow it. So I don't want to talk about more than that because there's nothing more to say. I mean, I could sum up what Satanism is, but that would take 20 minutes. <laughs> Mitranianism, uh, unsure exactly if this is within occultism, something, something unique, but is uh, a god within Zoroastrianism. And uh, it has many influences in Zoroastrian Gnosticism, if that's what they mean, which is make, oh gosh, Manessianism. Man, Manessianism, yeah, I can't pronounce it. There's a really good um, video on that on YouTube by another Swede, a convert to Muslim, <laughs> really funny. But he, he'd done a video on it, and I recommend you listening to that if you want to deep dive into Zoroastrian Gnosticism. But more than that, I don't know what this is supposed to say about occultism today if, if some occultist uh, has this god within their occultist tradition unsure i do not know 
because I do, not, I do not know much about Zoroastrianism. It's not a topic I know much about. I have only met one Zoroastrian in my life. She was cool. Let's bring a bit more. Yes, I think he means the other thing. So not Meantrianism, but the other thing, which has sort of the Gnosticism dualistic tradition. So e good versus evil. And a lot of philosophers have used this good versus evil within the Zoroastrian concept to justify their policies. So, cool, SpaghettiO. Hindu nationalism. So, pff, if you don't mean literally Hindu nationalism as in the Hindu nationalistic party and blah, 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 but you mean more the system that Hinduism has a place, I can show you this funny meme of Rene Ganon liking like the hierarchical system of uh, the Veda scriptures and Brahman, blah, 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 which is very uh, popular within the cultism. Uh, and that India and the world should be ruled as the old Veda scriptures. <laughs> I think that's, that's about it when I think when it comes to Hinduism. And learning Greek I will not touch. All right, tier five. We're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. I spent way too much time on this one. Uh, this one's odd though. But let's go. Learning and studying Hebrew to understand Kabbalah. All right, so Kabbalah, I'm no expert in Kabbalah. It's not really something I fully grasp. There's a lot to it, but it can be viewed as paths. You, uh, so uh, you on the bottom, well now when you're not uh, spiritual, and God is in the top, or the divine is in the top. So it's a pathway of, of moving and pathway of knowledge. That's some way it can be used. It can be used in other ways. I'm not an expert in Kabbalah, so... Tulpa. Okay, this this is a new thing, but it's actually very simple to explain. It is an imaginary or a sort of a ghostly paranormal uh, deity or being that is talking to you and guiding you. It started from uh, Tibetan concepts taken in by theosophy and then taken in by edgy people on the internet because all I can find is literally anime characters about the people's tulpas which is really weird. Like, this is my imaginary friend, his name is Bob, and, and he guides me, and he tells me who to date. It's, it's, it's a ghost. It's a, it's a ghost or an imaginary friend that guides you through life. Maybe ghosts, probably ghosts. So you're just a ghost friend. A ghost from another dimension telling you who to date. <laughs> yeah. Henrich Camillus Agrippa. It's an old occultist person uh, from Germany in the 1500s, right before the Reformation, sort of. Uh, he's He built a lot of hermetic tradition, hermetic occultist tradition in Christianity, which is used by sort of the mid, mid, Middle Ages sort of uh, occultism. So he's, a, he's an important person for old occultism. Ah, oh, no, he wrote multiple books on occultism, on magic, on philosophy. Important book within occultism during the 1500s. Gregorian demon worship. All right, so I'm having a bit of an issue finding anything about this one. I found one weird page that I don't know if they mean, but I'm actually going to read this here. Satanic Catholic Georgian Calendar. This page exists to warn Christians of the dangers that can be found in Satanism, the occult, and Satan's many earthly holidays that have been sold to Christian as Christian holidays. Yet they are rooted in paganism, idolatry, and Satan worship. Many of these Christian holidays are sold to the masses by making them a fun for family, candy, dressing up, romance, lust, food, and tradition. Satan's Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Halloween, etc., have permeated society and even captured the homage of practicing Christians that do not see the danger in submitting Satan's calendar and holidays. I doubt, I strongly doubt it's that, but I'm not really finding anything else here. I'm finding Georgian, uh, that, that may be what they mean, Georgian demons, which is, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Dali, it's not a demon of Georgian descent, but Georgian mythology has a goddess of, I think it was fertility, and named Dali, and Dali is a goat. And this goat is also, I think, become a symbol of Satan later on, Beelzebub. And it might be coming from this tradition, which is interesting, but I don't think it has anything to do with that. So I don't really know what in the fuck uh, they're looking for here. There's something called theistic 
Satanism, which is the belief that Satan is, you know, a real deity that controls and uh, uh, creates mischiefs, like literal Satan. Uh, but I don't know if they mean that, so I'm just gonna skip. Egyptian paganism. So it's more or less you actually believe in Egyptian gods, and this wasn't that uncommon. Again, I, I, I think I've explained before, Egyptology was such a massive thing during a period of time because it was sort of a time of human history we didn't, didn't know anything about. So when we started exploring that, we started a, a, a new sort of a cultist tradition started growing up from that, sort of exploring it. And I told you before the Thelema had Egyptian deities in their roster. But there's literally people just believing in mostly the Book of the Dead. Uh, you might have seen the series American Gods, or read the book, obviously. Uh, in there you see a lot of the Egyptian gods. Mostly it's you, you weigh your heart against the feather. And if your heart weighs the same, or I think less, I think it's the same as the feather, you can go beyond. You can get your own, I think it is, you get your own little plot of land in heaven. Or you can just do your own food there, that's pretty much it. But if you don't, you, yeah, you're damned. So a lot of these, uh, these are actually people that are believing it, but it's mostly just of curiosity's sake. There's a, uh, uh, yeah, there's different sort of Egyptology groups, even in Sweden that I know about. Not counting Rosenkrantz, Rosenkrusen, or whatever they're called again in English, Rosenkrantz Orden. They don't count because they're weird. <laughs> but yeah, but actual believers of the pagan ideas of Egypt. Not many that fully knows about it, but some people, I guess, believe in it, but it's mostly occultic. So, yeah. Pan occultism. So Pan is a god from Greece, uh, sort of the mischief, I think it is pretty much. Uh, so it's a god of the wild shepherds and flock, nature of the mountain wilds. But it reminds me of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, sort of the little jester has his little hooves, looks like a goat. Uh, and it has mostly been used in, yeah, romantic movements and neo-pagan movements. And it often compared to Satan in some sense. But it's it's a deity that's being prayed or can be prayed upon in neo-paganism because he represents an archetype of male virility and sexuality. So, yeah, next time you see Midsummer Night's Dream, you just know that someone is actually uh, <laughs> worshipping that little goat thing because he wants to fuck everything and that's great that's virility that's sexuality that's great you know me shifts his pee pee, pee, -pee being everywhere <laughs> and i actually played uh, this character in someone on stream it's, he's a fun character to play but jesus christ the amount of jumping and good 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 you have to do a lot of energy but it was really fun it was really really fun yeah puck that's right puck that's the name of it it's a representation of puck as well and some funny thing as well uh uh, Pan died. He actually did die in Greek mythology, and it's an entire romanticized version of of that. And G.K. Chesterton is talking about his death and sort of how what it represents, it represents death of theology, etc., etc. Quite fascinating stuff. Uh, I don't know what it's doing down here, but interesting stuff nonetheless. So next time um, you want your pee pee to work, pray to Pan. Esotericism. What, what's it doing down here? It's pretty much sums up occultism as well. More or less, it is uh, gaining knowledge or gaining, uh, knowing things, not gaining knowledge, knowing things that are not mainstream that other people don't know. You have an information, you, ha you have some know about and no one else does, which makes what you know a bit special, a bit unique. And this is an entire point of occultism is sort of like, I want to know what other people do not know. I want to know the secrets that other people don't know, the truth that other people don't know. It's, a, it's an entire allure of it. So yeah, there's a lot obviously to this as well, because la 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 la, it's a lot to everything, but pretty much it summed up. So esoteric knowledge, esoteric, you're very esoteric, I meaning you, you describing things that I don't know, like things pe people do not know, like cryptic, in other words, can also be like esoteric, like information or something that someone doesn't know isn't mainstream. It's Orphic cults, so a bit unsure, but I think you mean Orphiseum. Uh, I don't know how it's called. Maybe there's uh, people alive today following it, but I'm maybe unsure about that. But Orphiseum is more or less, uh, or, uh, 
it, it, it's a religious form, a Greek mystic religious form created by Orpheus, which uh, can also be viewed as like the beginning view of Gnosticism. So the question is, what the hell is this? Well, Orpheus is the person who went to the underworld. He, uh, I don't remember how the story went again. He's a, he's a, he's a bloody doo doo. He plays his little pew 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 pew. His music, a uh, beautiful woman, beautiful woman died. He wants to go down to the underworld to bring up the beautiful woman again that he loves. He's doing it for love. He uh, joins the raft of the dead. The, the dead brought him over the thing. He meets, he meets Hades. Hades says, I will accept this in one condition. If you have to walk all the way back to uh, Earth, but if you ever look back, she will die. And right before they uh, uh, get to Earth, or well, she, he's actually on Earth, but I think she hasn't gotten there yet. He wanted to see if she actually made it out, and he looked back, and she gone back, and could never come back again. And then he spent uh, the rest of his life playing sad songs until the women of the village beat him to death. <laughs> So, um, there's a lot here I'm reading. There's quite a lot of religion or mythology based around this story, but it's like, let's take it like, you probably all the sad songs he played, someone listened to it. The central focus of Ophiopsum is the suffering and death of the god Dionysus at the hand of the Titans, which form the basic of Orphaneism's central myth. According to this myth, the infant Dias Diasus is killed, torn apart, and consumed by the titans. In retribution, Zeus strikes the titans with a thunderbolt, turning them to ash from these ashes humanity is born. All right, well, all right. This entire Greek mythology based upon this man. So, ta-da, there you have it. It's Greek mythology. So isn't this just the same as Hel Hellenism, like Hellenistic faiths? But I guess there's cults based around this? I don't know. I can't find anything about it. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. All right. TTR6, level 6. Uh, this one, it's also a mix, I should say. Like, Ugarith polytheism I find very fascinating. I've, uh, I took a course in Ugarith, actually. Uh, but I failed it because, yeah, yeah, yeah it was not easy. Uh, Uduna, I know something about Spinoza and Jungian, sure. But it's just... Seems like such an odd mix. It's like, why would you have hairy, like big, big bushy beard if you if you know about Wudun? I don't get it. But anyways, let's go into it. Because I mentioned Wudun, let's start with Wudun. So Wudun is a West African Wudu sort of uh, religion. Uh, specifically, I think I think it's like South Western. So it's like Benin, Tongo, like west of Nigeria, more or less. And here is, it's different from normal wudu, because it's, it's its own little version of it. But wudu, or what I've seen, there's a lot, lot to it, as it always is. But what I've seen at rituals, it's sort of a connection between you and the spiritual world. Uh, you, you have a spiritual connection with your ancestors, and they guide you throughout life. So what you're asking is how that guidance will be. And you do this through very ritualistic means, and with enough a lot of alcohol. <laughs> you drink gin, which is fun. Uh, but then it's a lot of fetish, it's like fetishists, which is uh, not fetishism as in sexual fetishism, but it's um, a small thing representing something else, so probably representing like ancestors or something. So like a small statue, a small little thing you can have on yourself uh, of a little African man. <laughs> There's a representation of the spirits. The spirit can be in this fetish. So yeah, it's it's a sort of a regional sort of religion for this area, very spiritual, very ancestor-based, tradition-based sort of history. It always has to be a medium that reads it for you. It has to be ancestor, it has to be there. It's very ritualistic how you do everything. You have to do certain things at certain times. If you don't, you get a bad reading. So pantheistic antitheism. I don't know this. I don't think this works. God is in everything, but God isn't real. Or God is in his universe, therefore I'm going to fight against anything who says God is not in the universe. Uh, I don't know how this one works. And I just think it's a, a bit of a fun goof of a name. 
so I'm not going to deep dive into this because I can't find anything on it. And maybe they exist something, but it's just odd combination. And this then goes into Spinoza, which is there as well. Spinoza, there's quite a lot to Spinoza in religion. Uh, I think it's worthwhile reading yourself and going deep into it. I haven't done too much deep diving into it. I mean, I have, but it's, it's never top of my mind. Uh, but sort of, you can identify God in nature, in a way. You, yeah, that you can find God in nature goes back to his pantheistic concept as well, sort of what he believed in. Not that God is nature, but you can find God in nature. All well, that, I would say. But yeah, there's much to him, but I don't really know what to talk to him about, and he's not really that interesting to talk about, so let's move on. And I guess we can quickly talk about Jung, or Jung psychology a ton of bit. So Jung takes a lot of inspiration from hermeticism in particular, but a lot of alchemy was also part of his uh, psychology. But view it as this, as well as his psychology and the rest, it's a representation of something else. So it's all about like different representations, different sort of connections, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. I haven't read too much into Jung. Uh, I know his character, like uh, uh, behavioral uh, characteristics, yaddy, yaddy which is interesting, but I do agree with Jung himself with many things that don't take him too serious with everything, especially when it comes to characterizing people. He even says it's impossible to characterize people. I might have characterized people, but it's still impossible to do so, no matter how many characters we have, like many different sort of characteristics or representations of pe person, people's personality we have. It doesn't, doesn't work. We we'll never do it. So yeah, while it takes inspiration from it, he also knows it's flawed in many ways. So, psh. it's also one. Why is this here? What's the point of this? Is it so you can read an Necronomicon? <laughs> yeah, you learn Sumerian. Okay, where a guy? I, I don't know. There's nothing to say. Ha ha, Sumerian. Ha ha ha, funny. Ha ha ha. Kill. Dionysian Christian unity. The interesting part here, all right? So, Apollyon and Dionysian are two Greek gods who are complete opposite. Both are sons of Zeus. But one is, you know, one is the other one's opposite. So in dualistic fashion, Christians have usually built up, you think these people are enemies because they are the dual parts themselves. But meaning, you know, God, Satan, the rest like that. But no, this is not the case. They are actually friendly with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. They like each other, friends. And this entire concept criticized dialectics in many ways. Sort of like, oh, the opposite, uh, you know, you, you, you argue with the opposite, you know, love is hate. Like, no, love is one thing, hate is the other. And then you find in between and you find some sort of a middle ground. And this is how you do it, through dialogue. And then obviously many forms of that come along. But here it's sort of like forming a new sort of idea. And Nietzsche in particular wrote about this, that these are not dualistic in order. This is not a dialectic. Even though they're opposite, they're not dialectics. So what I'm guessing from what exactly they mean here with Dionysian Christian unity is sort of accepting that there is no dualism maybe between God and Satan or any other dualistic concepts and understand that these can live in unity or Christians can live in unity. That's what I'm guessing this is coming from. So, but it's, yeah, it's opposite doesn't always have to be enemies. Dialectics be damned. They're Gnostics. I'm unsure about this one. I'm unsure if they mean like the Gnostic Bibles or certain sort of information. But what I am guessing and sort of like really hard is the ones who know or the 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 information, like cer certain more direct because the, so it's something direct, it, that specific thing. Don't know exactly what they mean. Uh, and I think no one would agree upon what this is. Seems like more of an ideal version of Gnosticism, like the, the ideal knowledge, the idea, perspective, I, unsure. Ugric polytheism. No one believes this anymore. Again, I took a course in it. It was really interesting stuff, a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a guy who studies Ugric. Uh, but the idea of Baal comes from here, and the idea of, idea of Satan also comes from this. Baal is more influential than Ugrit itself is, which is kind of funny, because again, Christianity has Baal as a minor god in its pantheon, which is fascinating. 
and Baal is then the god of the Ugrid people. So yeah, the reason why Ugarit has any influence now, relevant in any ways, because it was a, sort of the major conflict, the major enemy of the early Abrahamic, like Judaistic religion. They were in direct conflict with Yahweh. So yeah, cool stuff. I don't think anyone believes it, but cool stuff. Ah, uh, and I'm soon done. Last one, seven. Uh, there's someone I could talk about here for quite some time. The other ones, I'm unsure. I'm even unsure if I can find anything about them. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm soon done. I feel done. It's been an hour. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hope you like this. I hope I get enough, enough information. Like, again, this could be easy, like multiple hours if I... No, <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe after the summer course, I, uh, uh, that's all I can feel, feel about this. Oh, more or less any sort of like AI movie, You're sort of afraid of summoning roboting demons. <laughs> just like, I guess just like evil AI Terminator things. I like building robot, uh, building a digital Loloboth is really interesting. Loloboth is a false deity, a false devil. So like the devil is real, but you can you can create a false devil, someone who acts like the devil. You have to react him to him like he is the devil. Uh, interesting stuff. So yeah, pff, yes, normal stuff. AI Terminator, you name it. This movie about it's probably saying like, oh no, AIs will take over the earth, and humans are double dabbles out of a scoobble dabble dabble doodle doodle do. You have a dated girl who studies linguistics? Just know she's a spawn of Satan and will eat you alive. Anyone who studies linguistics are a spawn of Satan. They will take over the world and eat us all alive. You have no choice. Repent to God. Repent now. Repent, bastard. Repent. So polyoccultism is multiple occultism in one. And skeptical, I guess, is like you're skeptical of studying multiple occultist traditions at once, trying to create your own. I don't know. Sounds like something uh, uh, some people do because people like to just mix mix and match. So yeah, try different religions, but be skeptical. So don't do it because you're skeptical. But try it, but you won't because you're skeptical. So what's the point of this? It's an oxymoron. It's a damn oxymoron. Comparative mythological mimetics. I think it's just more or less uh, you compare mythologies based on their memes and their memeability. So, yeah, here's one meme, here's another meme. Meme along. Meme religion, occult, follow it. Memes, memes, meme, 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 blah, 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 blah. Nietzschean monks. Uh, I have no clue. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of a lot of the books. I haven't read all these books. Uh, maybe there's some people who would follow that religiously, like the Antichrist. But I don't know. Monks, people who follow Nietzsche religiously. It's just odd. Don't do that. His sister put a fucking broom up his ass. Don't do that. Don't follow this guy religiously. It's a weird autistic guy. It's sure, good writer, but... Eh. I mean, if, you, if you're a monk, you should go to Paraguay and, and, and live in the New Germania... A village. That's that's for you. Go there. Philosophical mysticism as an esoteric metric to engage politics. So yeah, if you ever want to be a politician, just understand the mythic <laughs> internal Gnostic. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah, it's pretty much weird occultist internet people being like, oh, well, I can understand politics if I understand this weird concept of this weird hermetic. Tradition. I have sniffed the buttocks of Thelima, therefore I can uh, go into politics. My name is Saul Invictus of the Libertarian Party of America. I understand Thelima, therefore vote me as president. Or oh, no, I was accused of beating my wife. Or oh, no, the court said I had mystical powers. Or oh, no, common law sucks. <laughs> Last and final one. Baby, I know a lot about this one. 
Uh, Kali Yuga. Let me just explain this before I actually. So, before I go into this, I want to say this is one of the courses on my little summer thing. I'm going to have not a course, it's not this, but we're going to talk about this more. And I'm going to make a video on this sort of concepts, but I can't really do it in this because I want this to be monetized. So, so Kali Yuga, what is that? Well, end of days, sort of. Uh, the chaotic form. So Kali believed in destruction and rebirth. She's the god of death, more or less. But she's not a bad guy. Like she will be like Satan of things, but she's not the bad guy. She believes through destruction comes rebirth, through the ashes rebirth, and uh, she lives in recycling constantly. Like uh, the human humanity, it's constant recycling. Destruction, rebirth, destruction, rebirth, destruction, rebirth. And Kali Yuga accelerationism is this exact thing, but we're accelerating the chaos. So uh, this is very influential in the West for the moment. Uh, a lot of groups follow this. A lot of groups have been infiltrated by these types of concepts who wants to destroy and destroy and destroy and destroy. And the thing is, these are apolitical, well, not apolitical, they're in the political extreme, they're apolitical themselves because their entire goal is destruction. So they will infiltrate Marxist groups, right-wing groups, Greenpeace groups, like Green Movement groups. The entire point of them is destruction. And uh, trust me, it's very visible. It's more and more starting to show up, and it goes with this accelerationism as well, which is not the actual definition of accelerationism, but it's the, it's the botched version of accelerationism, which is, which is gotta go fast, shoo, gotta go fast. But so a lot of these people take influence from, let's say, uh, Shishek. Uh, Shishek, for example, uh, uh, a lot of his ideology, even though you might disagree with me, with, but it's not very true. A lot of his ideology pushes a terrorism, pushes sort of that sort of uh, pu uh, accelerationist growth, uh, which is bad stuff, together with uh, Devi and a few other people, which I'm going to talk about more in the future, but again, it's, it's very controversial things. But yeah, this Kali Yuga... Accelerationism is very active in the West right now, very pushy. A lot of groups has it. But it, it well enough also goes into Satanism. But its entire point of visit, Kali Yuga, it, it, it comes from uh, Gnosticism in the West, influenced by Hinduism, as everything is in the West. And um, after Hitler lost, a sort of uh, uh, failure. Uh, mentality started growing up instead of like instead of losing we should destroy everything uh, you know even Hitler himself said this it's like the the Aryan race has no reason to live if we lose so uh, yeah not good stuff so this is entire concept of it it's yeah yeah it is what it is but the entire the, accelerate to chaos yeah so that was it, a bit vaguer than I expected it to be, but it's kind of like, you know, I think it's a young kid, Protestant, or like former Protestant kid who wrote this. Because there's a lot more juicy things within Gnosticism. This doesn't really cover it. 